Over the last 40 years, Tetris has been a household name. Its simplicity struck the consumer and grew beyond the reach of Russia and across the world. The story of its development reads like an action novel and its cultural impact is immeasurable. So what happens when we take one of the most beloved games and give it some depth? I present Redeveloping, and today we are going to remake To take Tetris into a higher dimension, we must first understand Tetris at its core. The game has the player manipulate blocks into a grid. If the player completes a line, it goes away and gives the player a score. If the player clears multiple rows, they get more points. And if they clear four rows, they make a Tetris. Just don't let the Minos reach the top or you end the game. Inside the gameplay is a simple code base that many beginner programmers attempt to replicate to improve their skills. Tetris clones are scattered across the internet with new ideas, mechanics, and styles. Taking Tetris into the third dimension can have some challenges, so we should look at other games that do the same thing. We should start with the Nintendo published game with the same name, The Virtual Boy's 3D Tetris. Most people know about The Virtual Boy by now, Nintendo's failed console that was supposed to compete with the 32-bit consoles of the time. It was under-supported and half-baked at best, but the ideas presented on the console were ahead of its time, including VR, 3D vision, and a full-fat console that was somewhat portable. Part of its launch title lineup was this hidden gem, 3D Tetris. Looking at it, you could tell that it was plagued by hardware on account of the wireframe look and the controls being unintuitive for 3D. But overall, it does work as a game, however slow it might feel compared to a modern Tetris game. If we were going to rebuild it from the ground up, we would need to fix these problems. Our controller would need to be able to control a camera while also being able to move the tetrominoes forward, backward, left, and right. We will also need to create a system to rotate the blocks intuitively. Once the tetromino hits the ground or another block, we gotta give the player a grace period and then set the position permanently. If we can get this to work, the rest of the game can fall into place. Opening up a new project, I set up the input script that will handle all input for the game, including keyboards and gamepads. I threw in a camera that sits inside of a pivot point, and we can rotate that camera based on the rotation input, and also lock it so that way the player can't just do something crazy. With that, we can then create a 3D grid. This will be hidden for the final project, but for us we get to see how big this game will be. Tetris 3D on the Virtual Boy uses a grid size of 5 by 5 by 10, but I think the original game size of 10 by 20 is better. Just in case people disagree with me, this game will be able to handle different grid sizes, from 5 by 5 by 10 to 10 by 10 by 20. Whether this is a difficulty curve or a slider or just a preference for the player, we don't know yet, but I do want this to be an option. But the game board is only a fraction of this. Let's add our first blocks. A single block is called a Mino, and a group of blocks is called a Tetromino. The game will spawn one of these Tetrominoes and let it fall. We can do something similar with these cubes. If each Mino is a cube, then the Tetromino will look something like this. Very nice. In our game, we can now spawn a Tetromino at random, and then let the player move the block using the D-pad. This is not as simple as it might seem. If the camera is moved to the opposite side of the playing field, the forward movement makes the tetromino move backwards from the player's perspective. This can cause clarity issues and confusion in games that are complex. We can combat this by having forward be relative to the camera, so that way it looks normal to the player. We can also use this same idea for rotations. If you want to rotate to the right, we should do that based on the camera. That way, right will always be to the player's view. Now we have full control over the tetromino. When it hits the ground, there is a grace period, and then it is set in place. When this happens, we can spawn another tetromino at random. And as we can see, the game works as expected. But we are missing one major part of the game, line clears. In a normal game of Tetris, line clearing both keeps the player from losing and also gives points. However, 3D lines start to become more interesting. It becomes hard to see when certain pieces are placed down, and we are forced to make some decisions. We can keep a single line clear, or we can upgrade and make it a plane. 
By doing this, the player needs to clear a full plane to keep playing. And this can be challenging if the player misses just one block. This is a preference thing as well. However, the Virtual Boy also uses plane clears, so we're probably going to move forward with that just to keep with the old game. Scoring in Tetris generally follows a system where players earn points based on the number of lines they clear, with more points awarded for clearing multiple lines. There are bonuses for other moves as well, like combos or T-spins. We can implement these into our own game, completing it mechanically. With the full game in tow, we just need to polish the heck out of it. And now it's time for playtesting. Now, did you really think I was going to play this on my computer or some ordinary console? No. If we're going to start with a defunct console, we're going to end with a defunct console. This is my Wii U, and recently, we've really abused it to make new games. But we're going to put Tetris 3D onto my Wii U. But before we do that, we need to make some optimizations. Now, if you think about it, this Tetris 3D clone looks eerily like Minecraft. But that also means we can use the optimizations from Minecraft to make this run on the Wii. Instead of spawning all of these different cubes, we can use meshing. By taking all of these cubes and giving them one object to work with, and giving them one mesh, we can effectively reduce the number of cubes to about five. That's a pretty good increase, I'd say. And the final step was adding audio. I decided to add some 8-bit-ish sounds using SFXR. Sadly, I can't use the Tetris theme because of all the copyright stuff around it, but I did put together some other stuff and it looks and sounds pretty good. And with our performance considerations finished, we can now build it and slap it into the Wii and start polishing up this final project. And today we're going to close out with some Wii U time, because I'm a worthless shill. This was a fun little project and I think it came out very well. My code, as always, is on GitHub and the resources for the game in the video are in the description for you crazy people. I'm just glad I could come back from royally messing up the Portal game. But let's play some levels of Tetris 3D on my Wii U and see how badly it goes. Alright, the first thing you're going to notice is that, depending on the situation, the lighting doesn't work. What the heck? This took longer than I would like to admit to fix, but it turned out that I was using the canvas to block light. And then separately, the material that I was using for this skybox was also not helping at all. So once I removed that and did some slight tweaks to the colors, we eventually end up with this. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Please? Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, all right, okay, okay. So now we just gotta make sure we can try and, I guess we just, just play the game, right? Okay, cool. Whew. So anyway, Tetris in 3D, it's great. This is running great for the Wii U, to be honest. Uh, I, I, I should probably use the microphone correctly. Hi, cool. Oh, man. Okay. So, like before, basically we're using the cubes, and then we're simplifying the cubes every time you place them, and it's, it's great. It's amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. This took way too long for a block game, but hey, it's a great block game. There's obviously problems. As you can see, that green piece up in the sky, that's, a, that's the swapped piece. There's games in Tetris where you can hold a piece for later. That's the swapped piece. It should, it should let me take it back in a minute, but I, I want to find a good spot for it first. Okay, okay, the camera's a bit weird. It, I feel like it's smoothing it. I didn't add smoothing. Okay. This is surprisingly playable. I'm okay with this. Oh. Oh, this is great. Alright, back to Future Jacob. This was an amazing project. I'm very happy we did this. And everything is up on the GitHub. Sadly, again, the Wii U part of it is a little complicated. I had to remove certain things to make it work. So, in the Wii U side, there's no sounds, and some of the some of the little tiny bits are kind of not there, but everything should be up on GitHub, so that's the good news. Everything's good. All right, so pretty much, if you have any ideas, throw them in the comments. If you hate me, put a thumbs down. If you liked what I liked, uh, put a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more stuff. Um, next week is Minecraft Bot Army because I hate myself and I want to do something that's not Unity for once. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, Tetris. It's, it's 3D. It's a 3D Tetris. 
It's like three times the fun. 